Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today, get hype, 7.3 is here after like, I don't know, 4 or 5 months, something crazy. But nonetheless, we're gonna go through the changes, talk about what they mean, what's important, what's not important, so you guys can understand the patch and dominate as soon as possible. I'm super excited to get some new content, some new carries, some new supports, offlaners, mids, junglers junglers huh and let's get into it all right by the way guys if you want to become absolutely broken well what you need to do is sign up to the game leap website down below right now the reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there content that you simply just will never get on youtube we post every single day to the website it's really top tier stuff i'm very proud of what i make over there we also have other creators many of my great friends who are top tier dota players creating guides about different heroes different roles different items skill builds talent builds everything you need to know to get to the next rank so if you feel a little bit lost you're a little bit stuck click the link down below i'll see you guys there and now let's get into the video general updates captain's mode second pick fit all right i'm not really going to go through a lot of these i'm only going to try to go through the majority of the changes that people actually care about which is honestly most of them but Captain Simone doesn't matter too much. Multiple critical strike procs are now rolled from strongest to weakest and will stop rolling once a proc occurs. This results in the same DPS but is less likely to have multiple crits in a row or multiple attacks without a crit. Okay. Cooldown percentage reduction no longer stacks. Sources of flat cooldown reduction still stack. Oh, okay. Yeah, so th that's kind of weird. Um, I know that affects a lot of mini games in Dota as well. In terms of the real game, I think that it just affects like um, the neutral items being as powerful as they can be in the late game. So it's just a that's primarily a nerf to neutral items in general, as I see it. Increased HP region of all heroes with zero to 0.25. Okay, making a lot of heroes 15 HP per minute. I mean, that's okay. Water rune healing reduced from 80 to 40. Wow. I wonder if they changed anything else about that. If not. I mean, that's a big nerf to, to the HP, right? 40 is definitely quite a lot. It's nothing It's nothing that would dissuade you from buying a bottle by any means, but there's that. Second Roshan no longer drops cheese. Did they replace it with anything, or is that actually just all it is? Really? Do they just think it's that big of a timing? I mean, how I see this is like, basically, if second Roshan doesn't drop cheese, it makes it 10 times harder to end the game, because cheese is a big part of why you could end the game. Right, you have to think about it, like, Cheese is basically a second Aegis on most heroes, or in most circumstances. And so, that is a big nerf. Also, neutral creeps now drop five neutral items per tier, which is cool. I, I mean, I can get behind that. It, it, it's, it's good for a couple of reasons. It decreases the RNG of the neutral items, right? Like, you're more likely to get the good ones, or the ones you want. Um, so there's that. And it just makes sure everyone on, on your team gets a neutral item. So, yeah, it's cool. And this... <laughs> Disgust! Bonus HP regen down by 50 cooldown increases by 20 seconds every time it triggers up to 165 wow how interesting is that definitely a change i think makes a lot of sense i actually like this change a lot this is a really really creative way to nerf this item without destroying it i think this is actually kind of genius i'm curious to see how it will play out but it makes a lot of sense to me because it's like a weird item to change you know um if you nerf it it, it just becomes irrelevant uh in some ways it becomes irrelevant if you nerf it in in the wrong way and so this makes a lot of sense to me. You just make the item a worse late game item, which is when it tends to just be such an annoyance. Um, so I can totally get behind this. Abyssal Blade, Bash damage increased. All right, that's a bad item, so it makes sense. So is Basher, which I'm, I'm imagining got the same change. Mana regen on Aether, a little bit worse. Nothing crazy. Ability cooldown reduction increased on Arcane Blink. Uh, okay, I didn't feel like this item had to be buffed. It has its place in the game, but sure. Arcane Boots. Extra mana from Arcane Boots. I already felt like Arcane Boots are fine. The 800 gold on the on the Arcane Orb felt great, so I didn't think Arcane Boots had to be buffed, but sure, I, I guess. Health Restored reduced from 115 to 110. Mana Restored reduced from 65 to 60. And Restore Time increased. So they're definitely trying to nerf the mid-bottle meta. Once again, do I think this removes bottles from the mid lane? The answer is a simple... No, it does not. Drums of Endurance, Strength and Intelligence bonuses increased from 6 to 7. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I already felt like Drums is actually a decent item that people don't buy enough. Like, I literally think that this item is mega underrated, and so I don't think... I, I This is one of those changes where I think Ice Frog's trying to say, Hey guys, you're not paying attention to this item that's probably pretty good, and you should look at it. Because other than that, this change isn't going to, like, completely change the item. Enchanted Mango, 5 less gold. Okay, that probably helps with certain starting item builds. Um... I think like there's some times where you'd end with 40 gold if you bought two uh, two mangoes in some circumstances. So then you could buy an extra branch. Yule Scepter, one less mana regen. Oh my god, that is a that is a lot. Woo! Damn. 
That is okay. Falcon Blade, the most underused item besides like Mage Slayer. Falcon Blade, two more damage and 25 more HP. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guy. I don't know. I don't know, guy. I don't know, guys. Gleitnir, bonus intelligence increased uh, 20 to 24. Okay, an extra strength and agi from 12 to 14. Projectile speed faster, which is fine. That's definitely just solid. I still don't love this item. I think it has its very niche situations. I don't even know what they really are. Um, <laughs> but, oh, yes. Well, yes and no. I hope they don't make this item. Actually, I kind of want this item to be good. Helm of the Overlord. Actually, I would argue this was the most worthless item of the patch. It was way too expensive. And the active had like a 45 second cooldown instead of charges when it sh definitely should have had charges. Let's see what they did with it. Rework recipe now requires Helm of the Dominator, Vlad's Offering, and a thousand gold recipe. Okay, so they're basically trying to make it like a Beastmaster-esque item. Um, just like this Mega Aura item. Which, okay, I can I can understand this. Vlad's is, you know, very nice buildup compared to Ultimate Orb. Uh, bonus stats reduced from 20 to 8. Now can only dominate one creep. Creep movement speed increased from 380 to 400. 25 to 80, which is a lot. Double the armor and grants flats. Uh, I don't think this is good. I just don't. Like, it doesn't give you any stats, right? So you don't you don't get inherently tanky because of this. And, you know, obviously you get like Vlad's and Helmdom stuff, but I don't... I don't know, like, I don't feel like this makes this item good. I just look at this and I'm like, yeah, this is just super mediocre. I mean, it's nice late game. Like, that's that's the best thing I can see with this. The, the only vi value I see of this item, which maybe is Ice Frog's intent, is it's basically the ability to have more item slots in the late game on, on unit heroes. That's all I can see this as. Other than that, I don't, I don't think it's an item you would ever consider buying early into the game. Hurricane Pike. The restoration increased from 5 to 6. Max attacks from 4 to 5. That's actually pretty good. I actually think this, uh... This interaction is underused. I, I even believe I forget to use it most of the time, and it's it's quite strong. So, yeah, uh, Mage Slayer. Now it requires Oblivion Staff, Cloak, and a Recipe. Dude, I hate these recipes. Total gold cost reduced from 3250 to 2400 Wow, okay. But it's a very different item. Definitely doesn't have... Um, it definitely doesn't have the, you know, the, the Agi you would typically buy it on, you know, like uh, your Slarks and your PLs, if you were to buy it, or your Embers. Um... I'm guessing it still has the same active, considering it doesn't say anything. So, same active for about 1,800 less gold. Uh, gives you 20% magic resist, 20 damage, 10 int, 15 attack speed, and 2 mana regen. So, when I see this item, I see maybe a Lena item, maybe a Storm item. It's tough, though. Um, it's tough. I think it definitely has potential, though. I definitely can see potential here. Especially on your PLs, your heroes like PL, that inherently want to buy a hood. 20% magic resist is a lot. It's a lot. The only problem is you do not get HP regen, which is a big part in which you would buy Hood in the early game. So I don't think it really can replace that build necessarily. It's an option though. If you're free farming, it's an option. Rod of Atos, bonus int from 20 to 24, strength and agi from 10 to 12, and projectile speed up. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Atos is okay in some games if your team lacks lockdown. Status resist from 16 to 12. Okay, Sonic definitely had to be nerfed though. That item's just, it's been too good for too long. A uh, sentry word, more sentries for less time. Okay. I think that's good because, you know, it's just more, you get more of them and generally in the late game and in, just in Dota right now, you need them to D ward like hills and stuff. So I, I like this change. I think it's good. More sentries. Silver Edge, recipe rework now requires Shadow Blade Crystallis 350 gold recipe. Total cost decreased from 5650 to 5300. Uh, so it's got the Shadow Blade and the Crystallis, which is definitely very cool. It's a lot better then, um, oh, what did this build from? It built from the Oblivion Staff. So Chrysalis, I would imagine, is quite a bit better uh, for certain heroes like your Sven's. What else? Oh, what else would use this? What else would use Shadow Blade Chrysalis? Sven? Lina? Maybe? Yeah, it could be, could be good on Lina. Grants 60 damage, which is a good number. 40 attack speed, solid. 30% uh, chance of 160% crit. And Daedalus, I believe, is 220%. So it's definitely not that great of a crit item. Attacking breaks out of invisibility now guarantees a crit with a bonus 175 damage. Okay. I mean, that's solid. Definitely for a hero like Sven, having a guaranteed crit coming out of your, your Silver Edge makes a lot of sense. So I don't know what else, what other hero this is good on. Maybe a tiny type of thing, but I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a weird change. I think it's good, but I'm not, I'm not sure how many heroes can still buy this though. Smoke of Deceit, increased max stock from two to three. 
Starting stock is still two. I think that's good. A lot of people would forget to buy them and then they would miss out on their smokes. This makes it easier to make sure that that doesn't happen. Wind Waker, recipe reduced, so it's just cheaper. Definitely one of the best late game items in Dota. Absolutely fantastic item. Can't stress that enough. If the game goes super late, don't forget to upgrade your Yules or just buy this item in general. Being able to save people is nuts. Witchblade uh, does less damage per int, but the duration was increased, so it actually does the same damage. Okay, just over a long, longer period of time. Fixed interaction that caused Witchblade to give permanent true strike. Okay, so if you guys didn't know what that was, basically, let's say um, you're against a PA and you started attacking her with Witchblade. Uh, it would just guarantee that you had True Strike uh, if they were if they were spell immune because your item wouldn't proc, but you know when it does proc it gives True Strike. So basically, if it didn't proc, then you just had permanent True Strike. So it was kind of weird. I don't I don't know why it worked like that, but you know it, it makes some sense. Neutral item updates. Oh, a lot of item removed. Fader brooch gone. Definitely a solid item. This is a very solid item. It's just like one of those items where you're like, okay, I got a brooch. Someone's gonna use this. Just a great item, you know. Int movement speed. I mean, uh. Mana movement speed. Can't, can't go wrong. Iron with tree removed. Okay. M Claw. Definitely one of the better items. Oh, no. This is one of my favorite items. Or like my favorite neutral item to use. Oh, I love Illusionist Cape. No. I agree it's kind of broken. I actually think this item was mega busted. But yeah, and so was M Claw. M Claw was one of the better items. It gave so much DPS for, for what it was. Minotaur Horn removed. Okay. Orb Destruction. Yeah, this item sucked. Ballista removed. All right. Pig Paul. What the hell? <laughs> Grants six to all stats. Pig out. Turns the owner into a pig for four seconds. Grants 10% movement speed. What? So like you just run around faster? I'm imagining you can't attack though. So it just lets you move around the map faster? Is that it? What the hell? <laughs> what the? That is that is odd and kind of hilarious, but more so odd. Tumblr's toy! New tier one item. Grants 200 mana. Active Volt propels your unit forward 300 units. Well, then 30. Goes on a 3 second cooldown when receiving player base damage. Uh, this item seems kind of busted, I'm not gonna lie. It's just that it's like a mini flicker. Obviously you can't use it when you take damage, which is like, it's good that that's the thing, but... I don't know, that, that's like kind of busted on certain heroes. Like, let's say you need to get on top of someone with Tiny in the early game. It just lets you like, yoink on top of them. It's like a mini blink dagger. 300 units is a lot, guys. Like, I don't know, that seems kind of busted. It doesn't give anything besides mana, but like, once again, on a hero like Tiny, or like, uh, what else is a good example? Maybe like an Ember, you know, just being able to move forward, kite around, it's pretty good. New tier 2 item, 10 damage, 10 attack speed. Dark Mercy, when attacking an enemy, deals plus 7 damage for each 10% HP the enemy is missing. That's a really good item. This is just a solid item. I, I think it's just solid, 10 attack speed, 10 damage, okay. Like, that's just like solid a seven extra damage for 10 percent hp so like if they're missing let's say half their hp which is pretty normal you get 35 damage which is a lot in the early game i guess you compare that to imclaw and this item's probably underwhelming in that regard compared to something like imclaw but not not too bad it's just not nearly as good as imclaw for farming but maybe this applies to creeps in which case that would be really good if this applies to creeps i definitely think this item is probably really i mean it's just solid if that's the case fey grenade New tier 2 item grants 20% movement speed, I mean 20 movement speed, which is always just a good thing. Active Shadowbrand throws a bomb to an enemy with 900 range, dealing your attack damage and applying a debuff that provides vision of the unit and deals 20 DPS for 7 seconds. Cooldown, 20 seconds, mana cost, 25. What? This sounds insanely busted. It's 900 dealing your attack damage? That's so abusable on certain heroes, even in the late game. Dude, this is but I die. There's no way this item isn't going to get nerfed. Am I missing something, guys? This seems so insane. Dealing your attack damage. What if you have a Daedalus? Like, you just chuck this thing at someone on a 20 second cooldown when trying to go high ground. It's like, you might have a chance to crit them and, like, basically kill them. It's like, and you give vision to them for 7 seconds. And by the way, it does 140 damage, which is quite a lot. Right? Like, I don't know. 7 seconds of vision? It's like a track. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but this item seems very good. Like, just casual 20 movement speed as well. Blast Rig, tier 3 item, 8 armor, passive hell trigger. Next time you get attacked by a hero within 300 range, explode, dealing 300 damage to all enemies within a 300 radius, applying 100% blind for 2.5 seconds. Uh, that seems pretty solid. Definitely. Um, on, on your low armor strength heroes in, in the late game, 100% blind when you jump in. Super nice against right clickers who might counter initiate. In a 300 radius, by the way. That's... And it's a lot of damage, so... Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's a solid item, for sure. Ascetic's Cap. 
Tier 4 item, 300 health, 10 HP regen, so not the best stats for a tier 4 item. Passive endurance, this has got to be the good part. Whenever a debuff from a player controlled source would be applied to the owner, wait what? Whenever a debuff from a player controlled source would be applied to the owner, grant status resist for 3 seconds. Okay. So, okay. So it just, it just gives you status resist if people use something on you, which seems potentially busted. As far as I, I'm concerned, that means that if you get like stunned or slowed, you just get 50% status resist on a 30 second cooldown, which is insane because it obviously it's like an AI disc. It prevents you from getting chained on late game. So yeah, I don't know if I'm reading that right. This item is very good, like very, very good. Witch Bane, new tier four item passively causes your hero to deal extra damage to its target equal to 4% of its max mana on attack. Oh, that's cool. Active Dispel. Dispels all enemies and allies within a 300 radius. Oh, yeah. This item definitely seems pretty cool. You know, you can just imagine as well in the late game. Let's say you're playing something like a, you know, like an AA or some backline support with high attack range, like a Wyvern. Imagine this item on Wyvern and you're just like hitting some Scarath Mage with 2000 mana, right? But yeah, which being definitely decent. New tier 5 item. Plus 5 armor, 20% magic resist. Definitely a very tank heavy item. Passively grants 5 armor and 20% magic resist to all allies. Wow. Oh, it's a tier five item. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I see, I see, I see. I was like, what the? <laughs> I kind of thought it was like a tier four item. I'm like, that is really good <laughs> for like 30 minutes into the game. But no, okay. That makes a lot more sense. This is a great item in the late game though. 20% AOE magic resist is just really nice. You know, that's just, that's just solid. Just one of those things where it's just like, yeah, that's good. Can't go wrong. Equip it. Nice. Active mega shield. Mega shield. Grant gains a 35% damage reflection aura. In a 900 radius, it's a 35% damage reflection aura in a 900 radius, affecting all allied units for the next five seconds. Um, so basically, you give blade mail in a 900 radius uh, for five seconds, which, oh, it's damage reflection. Yeah, so it's just straight up blade mail. So it's, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, this item's really cool late game. It's definitely legit, especially against something like Black Hole. If you pop this and then someone Black Holes, it's like, you know, 35 percent times five they're you know <laughs> they're doing a poop ton of damage to themselves chip vest AP, hp regen from five to four okay that's fine bonus hp and fairy trinket 175 definitely still a good item possess mask lifesteal reduced from seven percent to a flat seven hp protect that is definitely a huge nerf to this item considering heroes like morphling would heavily benefit from the seven percent due to their high damage um at basically every stage of the game so this is definitely just a nerf it's probably okay on like int heroes maybe but for the most part, not good. Dig cooldown reduce. Really? I actually think shovels may be one of the best neutral items in the game. So it receiving a buff is a big surprise to me. It's not a big buff, but it's a buff nonetheless and a nice one at that. Um, definitely a great item to carry on carries, mid laners, doesn't matter. Anyone can use this item. Enchanted Quiver, arguably one of the best tier three neutral items in the game. Uh, 300 to 200 damage, which is a big nerf, but... The cooldown was decreased, so it does allow you to attack more often from a higher range, which is kind of cool, especially if you're doing something like um, poking in the late game. Debuff is no longer visible if enemies don't have vision of its holder. That is very nice because it was such a bad item only for that reason. It was good in every regard besides this reason, so people would know if you're coming just if you had this neutral item clip. Flicker! We all knew this item had to get nerfed. Did it get nerfed? Cooldown increased from 4 to 5, and now blinks in place if the owner received damage in the last 3 seconds. Okay, yeah, I think this is, I think this is solid. I, I, maybe this kind of kills the item. I will say that having a dispel in the late game, even if it only makes you go in place, is still good. For instance, something like Cold Snap or Vessel, uh, it just being able to constantly dispel it in the late game, even if it makes you stand still for a hero like Medusa, is, is very good right is very good so heroes like medusa that are constantly getting disarmed and slowed and kited it's still an incredibly good item um so definitely do not count this item out and say that it's useless it's not useless it just is much better on these immobile heroes now or, or i almost want to say only good on those heroes but spider legs no longer considered a boot oh movement okay movement speed bonus reduced uh, yeah so this basically is a big nerf to um it's a big nerf to the heroes like Dusa, uh, Dusa and Sven, heroes like that, or just basically any hyper carry that farms really fast in the late game, because in the late game, you would take spider legs even over like high tier items, and just so you'd have a boot slot, because it would be your boot, and it would give you a ton of movement speed. Uh, but now, this is a buff, it's a buff, 
uh, to heroes that just want to run really quickly because you can use bots plus this type of thing. So it's a buff to like your, your int heroes and your, your strength heroes that aren't slotting out completely. It's a nerf to the, the main OP version of Spider Lake. So a very reasonable change to the item. Stormcrafter no longer triggers if the holder is invisible to the target. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So once again, just, just allows this item not to be kind of poop. Fallen Sky cast range reduced from 1600 to 1200. Uh, yeah, okay. I didn't feel like this item was busted, but sure. Abaddon! Oh god, how many changes is this? Woo! Abaddon! Oh my god, here we go, guys. All the hero changes. This is what we care about. My god! Ah! Is it every hero in Dota? Oh lord! Strap in, boys. Pause the video. Go get some water. Go get some, I don't know, lemonade. Get your pasta with pesto sauce. And, um, strap in. That's all I gotta say. Abaddon! I'm going to try to basically only talk about it if I think it matters, though, just just for the sake of the video. And it's really funny to watch people in the comments get triggered when they're like, Speed, you skipped over Ancient Apparition, and Ancient Apparition Ultimate got a five damage change, and that means that Huskar lives in some really... <laughs> okay, Abaddon's strength changed from 23 plus 3 to 22 plus 2.8, so a nerf cast range increased on a Photic Shield. So, okay, I mean, I think this hero is still a good support. And this town's kind of cool, but it's late game, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, Abaddon didn't change. Alchemist, cooldown reduced from 16 to 13. Mana costs are rescaled, okay. Now, additionally, grants 30 movement speed, that's solid. I mean, basically what, what I see this as is maybe you can bring back the Unstable Concoction Magical Damage build with the talent at level 10. That's all I can see. Oh, they changed it. Never mind. <laughs> Don't do this build. Don't pick this hero. Ancient Apparition, cold feet, cooldown increased from 10, 9, 8, 7 to 12, 11, 10, 9. A big nerf. Two seconds is a huge deal, guys. Oh, shit. 20 seconds more on Ice Blast. Oh, that is a massive nerf. Good lord. I don't, I mean, I don't think it removes the hero. I think they're just trying to push it back to anti-heal hero, not good every single game just because it kills you every 40 seconds hero. So I think it's good. Animage, strength gain increase. Definitely a bad hero. Needs some buffs. Rework shard. Counter spell now also passively grants 900 range offensive aura, reducing enemies magic damage by 10% grants triple the effect to enemies within a 300 range yeah i just don't think this is good i actually think this is just a nerf the old shard was good the old chart if you guys don't know what it was is it reduced blink cooldown by um two seconds and give it extra range and it was good like it was just something you'd buy most games after your third item so i think it's just a nerf i just don't like this it just doesn't i mean i get the concept it's just like it's like i don't know i don't think it's good Blink Fragment Scepter now has three charges. Really? I feel like this is theoretically broken. I'm not really fully under sure how this works, but I have a feeling this is like busted. I don't think this hero is good, but maybe this is the way to play the hero. Just buy an Ags. Level 10, uh, one second blink cooldown. Eh, I mean, it's okay. Plus eight armor replaced with 0.7 mana void stun uh, talent. So you probably take that. And uh, one second mana void stun replaced with blink cast range. So they just move the shard to the talents, which I mean, I don't know. I... I get the concept that gives him like it gives am more options but i don't think uh, the shard it seems like it would be good i just don't think it's that good it makes some sense but i, I just don't think it's that good arc warden slow shard increase from 20 to 30 percent that doesn't do much uh 12 cdr remove they must have changed it right it just loses his cdr 40 attack speed 40 magnetic field attack speed what why did this hero get nerfed this just looks like nerfs to me am i crazy it just looks bad I mean, what you can say about this is like, it's like good for his teammates, but I don't think that's like the point. It's very hard to use it like that. So I don't think this is good. And 40 flux damage per second also seems really bad compared to attack range. I don't know. I feel like this hero has just got annihilated. The only thing I can see with this is like, they're basically like trying to make him some sort of like Ags buyer. I don't know. This seems horrible. I don't feel like, yeah, I don't know. Axe, rework shard now causes counter helix to apply a six second stacking debuff that reduces attack. Ugh. Okay, I'm. Um, yeah, okay, I don't. You probably just don't buy this, right? I mean, it does reduce attack damage by 20% and it stacks. That could be kind of cool. I mean, you could reduce someone's damage by 100% theoretically, right? Like, it's not. That's probably not terrible. Uh, Bane, brain set, mana cost reduced by 20 at all levels. Cast range increased. Okay, nice. Nightmare now deals pure damage per second to enemy nightmare targets. That is also really good. Uh, that's really, really good. Oh, oh, okay. So, oh, no, it's just good. 
right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Big buff. And cast plan reduced on Fiend Crypt. Yeah. Big, big Bane buffs. Like really, really big Bane buffs. I, I definitely feel like this hero is on the verge of becoming very good. You max Nightmare, um, right? You go, you go, uh, basically what you want to be when you're, you're kitted. You want to be 424. You don't max Brain Sap, I'm pretty sure. You put two points in it for the laning stage. So you're 0, 2, 1. And then you're going to max your E. And they're going to max your Q. And I think this hero could be good. I think Bane, everyone should keep Bane on their radars. Battle Rider, bonus damage uh, increased from, okay, so by a lot, but what do they change? Damage reskilled. Uh, so they made Firefly do a lot more damage level one, but the cooldown got nerfed to level one. This seems like a big buff though. Um, giving Sticky Napalm just like, even though it's only four, it's obviously like additive, right? Per Napalm. So this just seems like a big buff, to be honest. Also, like, just straight up doubling the damage. Um, it is worse at max, but that's totally fine. You definitely trade that out for this. So, big buff to, to bad, I'd say. I mean, the Firefly nerf hurts a little bit, but it's nothing... I, I think it's a buff overall. Beastmaster, Agatham, Shard, Call of the Wild Hawk can now be unit targeted. I don't, I don't even want to read that. I'm not going to... I just... Yeah, I just don't want to read this. Thirst. Now it heals half of the amount on the nice. That could be interesting. Health. Threshold increase for 75% to 80. That is a massive, massive, massive buff. Arguably a buff that makes this hero broken. I Another hero I would keep on my radar. Sure, it can cost what the? Cooldown reduced from 8 to 5, but it does half the damage. Mana cost reduced... Okay, but it does, it does a little bit more than half the damage for a lot less mana. The cast range was slightly nerfed. Scepter no longer reduces cooldown. Except their cast range increased. Now causes Shuriken Toss to deal extra damage. Okay. Okay. So, so basically you just chuck a shit ton of Shurikens now. Is what I'm seeing. This is the concept. You chuck Shurikens. And it's better in the laning stage. Sort of. So, yeah. I mean, the only thing I see with this is basically people who can skill at a level 1. Which I thought they could do with this anyway. But you can skill at a level 1 and just chuck it at people. And it's probably okay. It's probably decent. In mini stuns, it lets you follow it up with a right click. It's probably okay. Janata can now be toggled to disable auto cast. Okay, sure. That's actually good. That is actually solid um, for off lane and core bounty hunter. Brewmaster, a hero that's becoming very popular as of late. Brewing base damage reduced from 45 to 55. Okay. Void ruling base damage reduced. Uh, okay. Base attack time improved. Void Brewing now inherits Brewmaster's attack modifiers. Oh, really? It's kind of cool. It definitely is a big buff to the shard. So yeah, late game it seems pretty legit. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I think it's probably best with Basher. That's the most logical uh, use of this. But yeah, I, I could totally see this with Basher. Passive dodge chance increased by 5% on all levels. Okay. Um, this just seems like a buff straight up to Brewmaster, and this hero is already solid, so definitely another hero that I think is very good. Bristleback, base low decreased, scepter radius nerfed, max stats nerfed, stack duration increased. So, it's a buff to the warpath, it's a nerf to the Ags, which, I don't know, I don't feel like the Ags had to be nerfed, but okay. Broodmother, spin web, now grants Broodmother and her spiderlings movement speed based on the health of the unit. Grants the full amount of 100% health. And 0% when the unit is at 20% health or less. Really? Wow. Okay, so it's much, much, much easier to kill Brood when she's low on HP. And it's funny, and I, I, I like this. The reason why I like this is because Brood would very often live on extremely small amounts of HP. So I like that. Mana cost increased on Spiralings. Uh, damage reduced by 60 uh, at level 1. 50 and then 40. So a big nerf to the spawn spider links. Just huge brew nerfs overall here. Now we got a rework scepter. Vector targeted. Okay, so like a pango Q. Broodmother creates a 900 with invisible web line that takes two seconds to form. Enemy heroes that cross the web line will make it visible and become rooted after 0.25 seconds of 100% slow. They will be also visible in fog and receive 100 DPS for four seconds. Broodmother's team is notified in the minimap whenever someone trips in a web. Multiple heroes can trip on the same line until the duration expires, but illusions don't trigger it. Maximum of slice, five snares can be active, and snares can't be cast overlapping another. Two charges. Oh, great. Techies. Ha 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 ha. Brood techies. Very cool, Val. I love brood techies. Centaur Warrunner. Stun duration decreased. Uh, stampede buffed. Okay, that's just not good. Chaos Knight. Less strength. A nerfed Reality Rift at level 1. 
Lifesteal decreased on Reality Rift. Max critical damage increased from 140, 170, 200, 230 to 140, 175, 210, 245. So a big... I think they just messed this up, right? Am I crazy? Why does it seem like this was supposed to go under a different... This was the other ability, right? Okay, so they just made CK do more damage and sustain for less, which seems pretty reasonable. This is 15% is actually a lot. Phantasm. Fixed strong illusion buff on Phantasm being dispellable, which would cause illusions to die to illusion killing effects after that. I didn't even know that was a thing. Reality Rift target pull distance at level 10. That's kind of cool. That's definitely kind of cool. And then extra lifesteal if you want it. Yeah, I like this talent. I, I think uh, the extra range is really nice because it has a small range. So this seems like the better talent I'd have to imagine. 15 cleave replaced with three minus second chaos bolt ah the cleave was so nice i don't think i think that's just a nerf even though it's a lot of cooldown i don't know i think it's a nerf shin haven't seen this here in a while aura no longer provides heal amplification aura now also provides two three four five armor okay um so it gives hp region and armor then right which seems not great Rework Shard allows Holy Persuasion to target 1, 2, 3 Ancient Creeps based on Hand of God level. Old Scepter effect. And that's on the Shard. Rework Scepter. Hand of God now applies a strong dispel. Uh, okay. I mean, that's cool in the late game, for sure. Yeah, this seems like a very legit Shard. Definitely a legit Shard. Getting Ancient Creeps for 1,400 gold is super nice. Um, Do I, I see Chen becoming popular again? I think it's possible because of the Shard. People will definitely try it out. I probably don't think it's overall good though cling strafe removed new ability burning barrage with the same art valve's too lazy to get a new picture burning barrage channels for 1.5 okay channels shooting piercing arrows in the target direction in a distance away that hit all enemies units dealing 60 percent attack damage and applying modifiers arrow with 200 a 200 second cooldown what what is that meant to be 20 what the hell is this 200 second cooldown Oh, wait, what? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Okay, 28, 24, 2016. Not bad. Um, mana cost reduced from 12 to 10. No longer can cast spells without breaking invisibility. Interesting. So it's just a nerf. Can be casted from skeleton walk without... What the? <laughs> okay. Um, interesting. Sure. I guess it... Okay, they're doing this so you can't cast barrage from invis. I get it. So basically, you have Brood, you have Multi-Shot now. Very cool, as far as I'm concerned. Overclocking gives you less movement speed. That's it? Okay. Crystal Maiden, less base attack speed, uh, less mana on Crystal Nova. Explosion distribution is now more even across this radius, which I think is good. It was way too random. Shard now also increases total explosions by 20%. Do I think this hero is good? No, this is actually a lot of attack speed. People will overlook this, and they'll look at this, and they'll be like, oh my god. It's so good, but guys 15 attack speed in the early game is a huge nerf to any hero's ability to trade and you have to look at it like that It is a big big nerf uh, Fixed self cast behavior not working and with aoe surge talent. Okay, that makes sense um, Duration reduced from 45 to 30 Sure that makes sense considering it lasted for way too long now is true strike illusion duration increased from 5 to 8 and max damage increased Yeah, this is definitely a very good shard and they didn't nerf the eggs Darkseer, another hero I'd have on my list. 100%. 100%. 100%. little bit of nerf to the Ags, I guess, technically, here and here. But not too bad. Curse Crowd, Stun Duration, Reduced. And that's basically about it. Um, no, no longer ignores Movement Restrict- oh, Do I have to read this? Is this even in Captain's Mode? It's not even in Captain's Mode. Do I have to read this shit? No longer ignores Movement Restriction Abilities. Okay. Uh, no longer gets cancelled if Starbreaker gets rooted. Instead, just the movement is interrupted. Okay, I see. So she just like goes, she spins in in in, in a circle. Grants immunity during Starbreaker. <laughs> That's kind of lazy, but it's good. It's, it's actually a big buff. Like this is actually really good. Just being able to grant, um, you just like pop BKB by popping her Q. Like that can, it's so good for frontlining, you know, and just disjointing chain stuns and like just combos and purging stuff. That's really strong, actually, especially when you get the two charges, unless they got rid of it, which they might have um, based on this shard. Added Aghanim Scepter reduces Solar Guardian channeling time to one second. Solar Guardian can be cast again upon takeoff to land early. Solar Guardian now gives allies in the area 60% evasion while, while Dawnbreaker is airborne. Increases heal per, per pulse from 45, 70, 95 to 60, 90, 120 in total airborne time. 
uh, by 3.5 seconds. Really? So, yeah, I mean, that seems really good, actually. I mean, it's kind of, like, weird. Like, when do you buy it? It's one. This, this is one of those heroes where she kind of has, like, slot problems. She farms, like, pretty fast, but... I don't know. It, it's it's cool late game. Like, this is probably good late game, but it's not it's not something you buy early into the game. It's like a fifth or sixth item, for sure. Okay, so on the note of the shard, the only thing to really note is that they made the two star breaker charges at level 25, so they probably realized that with the shard, it may be a little bit too good, but... All right. Um, yeah, that, that makes the shard a lot worse, to be honest. Dazzle, base edgy reduced, now only refreshes its duration when Dazzle attacks the target. Base slow increased by 2, now increases its slow by 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 every time it's refreshed. Interesting. So it basically makes Dazzle a better core, um, is one thing I'd say. And it makes this hero really have the ability to chase you down. So I think they're trying to make Dazzle a core. Mana cost rescaled. That doesn't seem that good. 20 strength, yeah, they're trying to make him a core. As far as I'm concerned, giving him like a 20 strength talent at level 15 is just saying like, hey, you're a core. So, okay. I mean, Dazzle Core, is it a thing? I don't know. Maybe. It's, I don't, I, it's probably not that good. Base strength increased, okay, by a lot. Now fires 100 speed projectile towards the target area and silences the units in the AoE upon impact. Oh, that's a big nerf. It's like a big, big nerf. That's like a big, big, big nerf. Um, it makes it like very hard to like hit silence in some areas. People are going to live because of it. Cooldown on XO up. Uh, that's a nerf. Okay, big thing here, level 15 talent, Crypt Swarm at 15 is very nice. So that's a very nice talent change. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, I don't know. I'm going to say overall, the hero is probably about the same, if I had to guess, considering the cast points better anyway. So that's kind of nice. So I, I'm going to say DP is about the same. Formation time reduced from 1.2 to 1. That's actually really good. That's definitely going to be the difference between trapping people or not. Slow per strike increased from 0.1 to 0.2 to 0.3 to 0.4. Wow, 0.4 slow. Is a lot. I really like. I, I don't know. It, it might seem small, but I feel like these are pretty big buffs. A 0.4 second, 100% slow is a lot. Like it. That's a. It's a lot, guys. Like maxing this out is legit. I really think this hero might be legit. Doom. Intelligence gain reduced. Bonus gold reduced. Cooldown reduced by a lot. Damage increased. Duration rescaled. So they're trying to incentivize maxing scorched earth. And they also increased this um, this damage by a lot, a lot, a lot uh, at max. So what I see here is how I see this is they're trying to say like, hey, try out, try out going one four four, which I don't think is necessarily good though. It, it, uh, maybe it's okay. Maybe you go one one four. Is that a thing? I don't think that's good though. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what the build here is. Dragonite stun reduced by 0.25 at all levels. HP regen reduced by one going up, which is not horrendous but it's gonna get you killed occasionally for sure especially at level two you know losing two hp regen is pretty bad it's 120 hp every minute all right can definitely matter in the early game black elder dragon reduced on splash and medic just reduced fireball dps reduced but the damage buff uh debuff now lingers which i would say is overall just a nerf um considering you primarily use this for wave clear so yeah i i yeah it's just nerfs i mean i think this is a good way I don't think the hero was like busted, 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 but it was very, very annoying, very hard to play against. So, um, yeah, I think this is a good, good nerfs. Drow, marksmanship damage reduced from 50, 70, 90 to 40, 60, 80. Scepter split arrows no longer consume mana. Okay, that's cool. Is that it? It's just a nerf to Drow? She even good? Bonus damage? Plus 15 bonus damage level 10? That's pretty good, but you lose the stats. So, I don't know, probably an even trade off. Gust with at 15 is not as good as multi shot. Um, and multi-shot potential waves at 25, which is kind of cool, but you lose a cooldown reduction, which is a big nerf. Earth Spirit, way more stones, way more stones. That is a massive buff to Earth Spirit. Massive, massive buff. And Magnetized Duration is up, which is also a big buff. So basically on a support, um, I, I still think you probably take the rolling, bowling, rolling boulder distance, but maybe if you're snowballing like really hard, you can take this. So yeah, I, I, I think this is, a big buff. This is just a big buff. Just this right here. It's a lot more stones. Movement speed increased by five on Shaker. Some more int. Uh, he got some buffed talents overall. I'm going to say mm, doesn't matter. Elder Titan. Earthshaker is really fast, though. I feel like this hero isn't that bad. I don't know. It's weird. It's just it's just not a good laner. It's the problem. Elder Titan. It's not even that bad, though. It's not even that bad. Echo Stomp. Damage reduced. Okay. Duration increased from 8 to 10. Oh, that's just a big buff on Astral Spear. Like a big, big buff. This is just a straight up buff. I'm telling you guys, offlane, uh, offlane Elder Titan. I've, been, I've said it for a while. I've said it in a million videos. Offlane Elder Titan. I'm telling you guys. I, I just, 
This just screams awfully an Elder Titan to me. 10 seconds of buff. I don't know, man. I'm telling you, I'm going to try it. That's probably the first thing I'm going to play. I'm telling you. Ember Spirit, Searing Chains, Rescaled. Okay. Uh, wow, big buff to Flame Guard, basically making it really good at level 1. Like, really, really good at level 1. So, big buff to Flame Guard. Uh, a little bit of a buff to the Chains, sort of. Fire Spirit, Aghanim Scepter, Maximum Travel Distance Reduced. Okay, I mean, that's not bad. I would say overall just a big buff. Like, people don't understand how big of a buff this is. Being able to take this at level 1, based basically in any matchup, is really nice. It's quite nice. So, yeah, I'm just going to say a big buff to, to Ember overall. I mean, a little bit of nerf to the Ags, but I'm not going to say that's the end of the world. It's still 3,000 range, you know? Um, and at level 20, you get this really cool talent, which seems super legit if you want to go that route, uh, which is plus one Searing Chains targets, which definitely could be cool in the late game. It's probably not as good as you'd think, only because, like, how often do you get a three-man chain? But maybe, maybe. Enchant range reduced by a lot. Lost some talents. Okay, just an inch nerfs. Okay, so no longer can you stack Midnight Pulse instances, which is a nerf to the Ags, right? But Scepter now deals 5% bonus pure damage instead of the current level of Midnight Pulse. Okay, um... So that's just a nerf, right? I have to imagine that's just a nerf. I don't really see... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's just a nerf. Level 10? Uh, okay, I, I don't really get this. I, am I missing something? This just seems like... This just seems bad. Faces Void... Oh, because th doesn't this not pure spell immunity anymore? If that's the case, then I guess it's technically a buff. Right? So, okay. Um, Faces Void. Cooldown reduced. Okay, it's a big, big buff to carry Void in particular. So it's really nice. Plus six time dilation damage per second. Okay. Uh, or you can take time walk backtrack time. Oh, 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 oh for the damage. It's kind of cool. I mean, that's kind of cool. I don't think it's that good though. You know, like it's going to occasionally matter, but I think I'd rather just have nine strength and be tankier. Right. Because you just don't want to get bursted. So I think this is just a nerf. Level 15 talent, 300 re health reduced with time walk cooldown, which is cool. But then what do they do? They shard. Right, because didn't the shard also... No, the shard just increased the cast range, right? Okay. Um, so they just changed around the talents. 7% time dilation slow per cooldown. That's meh. I don't think you're too worried about the slow. It's already really high. Uh, 40 attack speed replaced with 120 attack speed in chrono. Okay, interesting. Still, I think that's kind of just a nerf. I mean, it's cool. It's definitely cool, but I think it's just an overall nerf. It makes wave shove much worse and like, just like your damage outside of chrono. So... I don't know. I, all in all, I'm like very confused by all this. I think it's like a concept by Valve to like nerf off the uh, support void a little bit. That's like becoming popular, but like, why would you want to do that? It's not like Buster or anything like that. So I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm overall just not not a big fan of this. I, I just don't understand it, I guess. Groom and Stroke damage increment per hit increased from 16, 24, 32, 40 to 18, 27, 36, 45. It's actually kind of a lot. Uh, Not too big of a deal, though. Duration increased from 3 to 4 seconds, which is just how long it takes to pop, right? So that's just a nerf. Gyrocopter, agility gain reduced from 3.6 to 3.3. Intelligence gain increased from 2.1 to 2.4. Homing Missile, reworked shard. Homing Missile now constantly fires a 700 radius rocket brush. <laughs> St <laughs> what? <laughs> Starting one second after casting. Rocket Barrage prioritizes the homing missile's target. What the hell? What is this? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's kind of cool. It's like really good against supports, and it's like really good late game, right? With the three, with the three charges. So uh, it's kind of goofy, but I don't know. I don't think it's good. I I, I can't imagine this is actually good. I, I don't think it's good. Yeah, it's probably just bad. Flat cannon range reduced by a lot, and cooldown slightly buffed. But then they give you level 10 flat cannon range. That's just a nerf, because obviously then you can't take the talent. Um, then you get extra flat cannon attacks at 15, though, which is a big buff. So there's that. And at level 25, you can take slick second flat cannon cooldown, which is also very nice. But then you, you're not getting this homing missile charges for the shard, which is a nerf. And this talent is actually kind of busted anyway. It was a really good talent in the late game just for being able to chain stun people and just be annoying. So I, I don't know. I, I like this. It kind of makes the whole like stat shenanigans good. So yeah, try out the stat gyro build. If you haven't, give it a shot where you take uh, no points to rocket brush, one point rocket, max flak, and then take stats. Hoodwink. Movement speed reduced by 10. Good. This hero is kind of busted. Damage is now dealt over time on a three second interval for half for the duration of the debuff. Okay, so I see. So basically, that's a big nerf to Bushwhack. It's very valuable to have a Quelling or Tangos to cut down your teammates, guys. Especially in the laning stage. Please, please, please pay attention. This is a huge nerf to this hero if you are paying attention. Decoy. 
Now throws a lesser bushwhack towards the unit that attacked the illusion and spawns the tree in its location. Okay. And I guess the shards are just a little bit better. Stun duration was increased to two though, which is good. Okay, it's probably good though. You know, if, if it's a two second stun, that's that's quite high. So the shard's probably legit. I, I think this is actually definitely a good shard. Hunter's boomerang can be ground targeted. Yeah, I couldn't believe it wasn't originally. I, I never made any sense to me why you had to click this on people. So big buff to, to the boomerang. It's It was very inconvenient to use. All right, Huskar, movement speed increased by five. Shard no longer reduces healing. Shard now heals Huskar for 50% of damage dealt and 10% of damage dealt to creeps. That just seems like a nerf for the most part. I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. Like, it could heal you last second, but the healing reduction was was quite good in a lot of situations. Um, Invoker. <laughs> what the hell? What? Dude, he's so slow, dude. This guy's a snail, man. Legit snail. Duration rescaled from 0.8 to 2.9 to... 0.85 to 2.6. Chaos Meteor main damage are scaled from 57.5 to 180 to 52 to 185. Okay, so that's just uh, slight changes. Doesn't mean too much, I can't imagine. Right? Surely that doesn't mean much. Deafening Blast damage reduced from 40. Once again, can't imagine this mean much. Okay, it's a big nerf, I guess, at level 1 if you're going to use it to finish a kill. But all in all, just, I don't know, this seems pretty irrelevant. Unless you invoker players can tell me something about this, this just seems like annoying to... If anything, it's just annoying to learn combos in some regard with, like, the lift shit. I don't know. This seems kind of pointless. I, I, yeah, I just don't know. Wow, okay. At level 25, you have the option to take 2.5 Quas Wex Exhort passive bonuses, which seems pretty freaking insane, right? Like, that's a lot of movement speed. That seems really good, actually. The only problem is you're obviously not taking the Deafening Blast AoE, which is a nutty talent, so... If you're going like full right clicker, you're going to have some like blood thorn. And this could be really good. IO max tether distance increased. Okay, it's just a buff and healing increased. Okay, another buff. Definitely think IO is okay. Holy lock and mech is probably the way to go with a wand. Jakiro, cast point improved from 0.55 to 0.35. Okay, that's very nice. That makes the spell actually much better. Half the cast time, essentially. It's a very bad cast time. I even played this here today. My team, uh, my Marana ran out mid, which was great, but. <laughs> Liquid fire burn damage increased as well. So big buffs to Jakiro. Oh, but they really killed Matt. Why did they do that? They're basically saying, hey, this hero is a better laner, kind of. Not by that much, you know, but I don't know. There's just I don't know. Ugh, yuck. I don't I don't like how they did this. Juggernaut, Blade Fury, damage increased from 85, 110, 135, 160 to 90, 115. Okay, so it's just five more damage at level one, which is nice. That's gonna help you get kills for sure. And the movement speed was once again reduced on healing word. Okay, sure, sure. Level 10 talent, 20 movement speed replaced with Blade Fury Radius. I mean, that's definitely good later on. It's kind of weird. It's like, this talent isn't great early game, in my opinion. Um, it does let you hit the entire wave with Blade Fury when you're spinning. You can do it already. It's just like awkward. It's good, like, though, when you get your shard and your level 20 talent. Um, but I don't know. I think you're still going to probably just take stats. Base armor increased by one. Uh, okay. That's good, considering Sierra had no armor. Channel time rescaled to three flat. So a big nerf at level one, but much better later on. So it makes the hero like a better core, which is kind of weird, but sure. Cooldown reduced from 20, 18, 16, 14, 18, 16, 14, 12. So I would say overall coddle buffs. Even though at level one, it definitely is a decent sized nerf. I would have to imagine this is overall buff. But this does, I don't know, this might be a bigger deal, deal than I think. Like... I'm just, honestly, I'm even imagining to some extent that this is actually just straight up a pretty big nerf. So, yeah, that's rough. Kunga. Ghost ship fleet interval increased from 3.35 to 3.5. Okay. Move speed slow rescaled from 35% to 20, 30, 35, 40. Okay, who cares? Cleave percentage reduced, but the bonus damage was increased. That's probably a buff. Is that a buff? I don't even know. That eh, probably doesn't change very much, honestly. Probably doesn't change very much. Legion Commander. Press the attack. Fixed level 25 AoE talent. Not working. Okay. Apparently that was the thing with Darkseer as well. Dual cast range at level 10. Okay. I mean, honestly, people should probably take this with the shitty ass blade mills they go. <laughs> you know, so many people buy blade mail. It's like, I'm coming in. I can't actually duel you because I have a blade mail, but I have a blade mail. So I guess this is cool, but the seven strength talent was really nice. So yeah, I mean, this is legit though. This is definitely legit. I can tell you for a fact, even with blink dagger, it's kind of legit. It lets you catch up to people. Sometimes you'll get kited even after you blink, like they'll back up, you'll under blink. It's a nice talent. I think it's good. It, it lets you rush blade mail too, which is kind of legit. So 
basically how I see this is like you have two options. Go like phase drums, which is kind of cool. I like the concept of that or like phase blade mail wand, which I generally don't like. But, you know, with this, it's it's maybe an option or you can take overwhelming odds radius, which is honestly not bad. It's not terrible. It's, it's OK. Uh, 20 attacks to be replaced with 40 HP. Re OK, whatever. Diabolic edict. Now deals pure damage. Whoa. No longer deals damage to towers. Oh, damage per explosion. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh my God. Oh, God. I mean, it's much better late game, sort of. Not even really that much better late game. It's o the only thing that this makes it better at is at level one against high armor heroes. Other than that, I'm pretty sure it's just a nerf. I cannot get this. Seems like a massive ass nerf. It makes support lash basically irrelevant. Yeah, I don't know. This seems really bad. I I, I mean, maybe they thought the hero needed to be nerfed, but I don't know. I don't like that. It, it, it like gives the hero like a very I don't know I don't even know what you do on this hero you farm I guess it's just like a farming hero now you take stacks and yeah that's it I guess it's probably still playable you just gotta play it much different it's less like a YOLO hero much more of a farmer frost blast mana cost reduced but not by a lot since your gaze alright who cares uh, chain frost increased projectile speed by a lot okay that's just this that's just that this seems like a massive ass buff right isn't this a huge buff 200 projectile speed is that does that count on the bounces? Because that's just a mass. Maybe Lich is busted. A little bit, a bit of a buff to the mountain. Not really, but like just this is a pretty big buff. 100 extra cast range. It's less mana. Uh, you can cast your other abilities when channeling Sinner Skies with the Axe. That's kind of cheesy, but OK, it's cool. I don't know. This seems like a, I, I'm going to pick this hero. The hero, the main heroes that are on my list right now are like Lich and E.T., which seem weird, but I just think it's like it's like heroes that are going to feel really nice. It's not crazy new changes, but they're going to feel really nice. Movement speed lost by five. Can no longer target. OK, whatever. Uh, less mana. Scepter now also applies disarm. It also deals damage immediately after infesting. OK, that doesn't that seems like just a nerf. I, I don't know. That seems kind of bad. Base damage increased by two. Oh, but huge nerfs to the attack speed. Just that's just a nerf straight up. This is a lot of attack speed, guys. This is a, like a lot, a lot of attack speed, right? Because that's 30 attack speed you're losing out on. Um, so yeah, definitely a big nerf. Base attack damage by two is cool, but I, I don't think it offsets that. Armor reduced by one. Okay. Travel distance reduced. Cast range is unchanged. Only bonus length is reduced. Okay. I see. Which is a nerf though, because you would clip people on the edge. So definitely a decent size nerf. Uh, then the Ags was, was nerfed as well, but that's fine. It's not really, I don't think that was a priority in this hero. I mean, I'm not going to say I think lines that bad. I think, I think this is like appropriate nerfs to the hero. Lone Druid. Fixed shard granting 40 attack speed instead of 60. Okay, who who knew that? Attack speed, not by a ton. Entangled chance increased from 20 to 30. That's pretty good, but it only affects Lone That's not that good. And demolition bonus damage increased. Only, oh. Okay, that's just not even good. Okay, that, that's just not that good. Cool that increased on Lucent Beam from 9, 8, 7, 6. Shard Glaive's acquisition range reduced from 500 to 325. Okay, that's a big nerf to the shard, but rightfully so. It's quite strong. It's quite busted. Damage reduction percentage increased from 50, 44, 38, 32 to 56, 50, 44, 38. Uh, okay, that's quite a big nerf for sure. Uh, I think very appropriate nerfs to Luna. I like where they went with this. I think it's not going to destroy the hero, but it definitely makes this hero not nearly as good as flash farming as it was. Um, and it's a big nerf to the laning stage here. So yeah, I, I think this is a proper nerf to Luna. I think this is a fine way with going about it and uh, which is kind of interesting because um, it actually does make them overall better. If you take the level 10 talent, your glaives go are actually 2% better, but obviously you lose out on the other talents and they are good talents. The stun duration eclipse. I mean, a uh, beam talent is quite good. So is the attack speed. So still, I would say just, you know, a solid nerf eclipse cooldown at 15. I don't think you would want to take that. Honestly, I guess with ag the Ags build, that could be good. Ags build? Huh? Huh? Probably not bad. I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Maybe it's the vibe. Eight stats with global lunar blessing. Oh, okay. Lunar blessing, not eclipse. <laughs> okay. And and then, okay. I see. Eh. They're just making them her, her a support or something. Shard wolves now have low attack priority, but only acquire enemy aggro if they're the only unit in aggro range. Oh, that's really strong, actually. If you guys don't know what that means, basically the wolves are going to guaranteed push the wave unless, um, they're going to guaranteed push the wave unless someone, you know, it, unless the hero's there. Shard Wolves can now cripple towers, does not affect regular wolves. Oh, wow. Another buff. Slowing attack speed on towers by 60 is insane. So a huge buff to Lycan Shard, like massive. Definitely a must buy in my opinion. 
Duration on Howl increased from five, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 to just straight up 8. And the cooldown... Oh, but the cooldown was nerfed. Sort of. Um, definitely Howling in the early game is probably legit. But it is a 20 second cooldown. I think it's legit though. Um, the only problem is when do you take it? And I think the answer... I want to say level 4. But that's just awkward because then you're not scaling your walls and you're not going to hit them level 7 as fast as possible. Which is bad. I, I don't know where you go with this. Uh, okay. 20 summon wolves damage at level 10. That's kind of cool. It's really good with the shard. Basically, how I see this hero is it's like you're going to have to play him as an offlaner uh, and you're going to buy Helm Dom, you're going to buy Vlad's, maybe Helm or Helm shit late game, maybe a Solar Crest, and you're going to buy a shard and, you're, and, and Axe, and you're just going to be like, you're going to be this like annoyance in the early game that kills people early game, and then you're going to buff your teammates like mid late game. I think that's the vibe on this hero. Magnus, damage increased on Skewer, and then they nerfed and powered. Duration. Not by a ton, but it is annoying. Oh, but they gave him 10 extra seconds level 10 instead of damage, which you probably take. Um, okay. Seems fine. Magnus is probably still good. Spear of Mars! Cooldown decreased from 14 to 14, 13, 12, 11. Wow, that's that's quite the buff. But uh the cooldown was was heavily nerfed on Arita Blood in the late game, which is which is really bad in the late game. But to be fair, in the late game, sometimes you wouldn't fight that long anyway. Kind of just depends on the game. So, I don't know, it's... I wouldn't say this is that bad, but it, it, it's it's annoying. It's annoying late game. Does he still have the cooldown reduction on Spear of Mars talent? Isn't that a thing, right? Then that's pretty good if you can take the CDR talent. With this, you're going to have a very consistent spear. Medusa, jump radius from 475 to 450. Definitely is going to make you miss occasionally. Uh, definitely a nerf. Damage per mana reduced from 1.6, 1.9, 2.2, 2.5 .2, to 1.3. Oh, that's a big nerf for level 1. So, basically, they're saying, hey, if you're going to leave this at level 1, which basically everyone does, you're going to get punished for it. So, big nerf to Medusa in the regard. Um, I would say right, rightfully so. This hero is probably slightly too good. Nothing nothing that makes this hero unplayable, though. Nothing that makes this hero unplayable. Meepo! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Is this hero playable at all? Strength gain reduced from 1.8 to 1.6. Agility gain reduced from 1.8 to 1.6. Damage reduced from 60, 80. Uh, 45, 60. Now he has pure damage, which is very good in the late game. Really good in the late game. Okay. I mean, sure. It's a nerf to the neutral creeps that have no magic resist or just like waves in general. So it's sort of a nerf. It's sort of a nerf in some regards when it comes to like wave shove though. Oh, but they, they reworked Divided We Stand. Okay, his ulti can be cast from any Meepo as long as there's another Meepo within 300 radius, causing the nearby Meepo to fling towards a target within 900 range, dealing 100 damage and slowing the target's movement speed by 50%. Whoa. Each Meepo has its independent cooldown. Really? Vita Beast Tank can be cast from any Meepo as long as there's another Meepo within 300 radius, causing the nearby Meepo to fling you towards the target. Oh my god. Okay, and that's definitely good. Early game? Being able to gank early game with this is really nice. Like, it's really good. Because basically what people are going to do, obviously, is they're going to buy, like, two Dragon Lances or something like that. They're going to buy Treads, and then they're going to play this hero like a ganker. Which, maybe is okay, because it's a really hard hero to deal with early game. I think, yeah, I, I'm basically the vibe I'm getting is, like, this is a legit ganker now, and, like, you should just run around with this hero. You farm for the first, like, ten minutes, and then you just gank. Or, like, eight minutes, and then you just gank. I think that's the play. Mirana, max stun reduced by okay level one again not too bad vision reduced that actually hurts sacred arrow cooldown at level 10 that's interesting uh, that's pretty decent sacred arrow cooldown replacing moonlight shadow gives evasion what the hell tree dance cast point decrease so now you can really dance around in the trees really quickly like really really quickly like really 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 quickly uh life steal increased on jingu by a lot like a lot a lot 10 percent a lot which is a shit ton at level one uh, Mischief, reworked shard, now reduces Mischief cooldown to 8, increases the invulnerability time to 0.5, and just disjoints projectiles on transformation. Mischief no longer reduces your move speed below your current one. Wow. A lot of Monkey King buffs. This is a lot of buffs. Maybe to the point that makes this hero good. And this shard is super freaking legit. This is a really, really legit shard. His tree dance is much, much better, and his shard is also much better it's the old mischief on an eight second cooldown you can dodge stuns dodge damage on an eight second cooldown and your movement speed can't be reduced by that much which is also really nice and i would imagine that just always applies uh to everything so overall big monkey king buffs definitely can see this hero getting a little bit of play i'm um, still questioning a little bit just because like how much damage it does is not that great but yeah i think people will definitely give it a shot and i think it has potential less mana on waveform Base damage reduced from 70, 80, 90, 100 to 45, 50, 60, 70. Okay, just the nerf to the spamming of that ability. 
Replicate no longer steals shards, except their abilities from Morphling. Ah, okay, so they... Really? Why did this hero kind of get nerfed this hard? I don't even think Morphling was good. Okay. Naga, actually gain reduced. Rework shard, now makes Song of the Siren heal allies for 5%. Wow, that's a lot. So basically, if you have a 7-second seven, seven song, you're healing for 35% of their HP, which is a lot. Riptide damage also increased by a lot at max. Like, a lot, a lot of max. 15 extra damage, considering how much you proc. It's a lot for clearing waves, so... It's a big deal for support Naga in particular. I think Core Naga can buy this, though, by all means. There's no reason why you can on Core Naga. It's just 1,400 gold, why not? On a hero that farms fast already. Uh, level 10 talent, you can get Agi, which is kind of cool. You do lose out on the mirror damage... Uh, mirror image damage, which is much better late game. But this is probably better early game, which seems okay. Oh! Okay, you get it at level 15, which seems actually like a huge buff, uh, considering this is only two less agi and you get it earlier, as I was talking about, and this seems, it, this is much better for the whole game, so, okay. Or you can take strength, a lot of strength, so, yeah, that's good. Or you can take Riptide Chance at 20, which is not bad. Oh! Nature's Profit! Bonus mana regen! That's right, give me some freaking mana regen, very nice, 30 mana per minute, not too great, but okay, it could matter. Fix multiple instances where destroying shards, sprout trees, wooden spawning grid or trains. I had no idea. Vision range reduced by 502. What? Tram base HP regen per second increased from 0.5 to 2. Whoa! Ho ho! I like that. I like that. You know we sustain him, babe. We know we sustain him, babe. Oh my god. All right. Wrath of nature damage per kill increased from 4, 5 to 6 to just 6, which is really nice and early. That's what I'm talking about, babe. Whoa! Level 20 talent, 20% ZDR, 75% miss chance for sprouting units. Why do I give a shit if they're sprouted? I don't need them to miss. I mean, to be fair, it's really good against like your Lunas and your Deuces. So like there's that. It's like really good against those heroes. But like, I want my CDR, man. Oh my God. No, this is my favorite talent. Besides the level 25 talent. No. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about all this. I'm going to say it's probably a buff just because of these two. But... Nah, this hurts my soul. Frick, man. How do you come up with this shit, Ice Frog? Strength gain. All right. Necrophos, the most confusing hero. Apparently good in pubs, but dog shit everywhere else. Damage increased from 100, 152, 250. To, okay, so it's just better later on, which is fine. Heal increased later on, which is fine. A self-restore amplification nerfed. This hero got nerfed. I guess that's just because it's good in pubs, right? I mean, this is not good. I can tell you that. There's no fucking way you're just like, yeah, I need cast range on Reaper Scythe. That was the problem on Necro. I couldn't Reaper Scythe people from further enough away. This is not good. Night Stalker, base damage increased by 2. Cooldown increased from 140, 130, 120. Okay, so just a nerve. Oh, but you get an extra duration, which is... I would say that's probably just a buff then. If, but you have you do have to take a talent to make it good though, right? But you also get damage at level, at level 15, so... I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is good. I think it's just a nerf. I don't know. It just seems weird. It's not an it's not a nerf. It's probably just like even. Base strength reduced. Base edge reduced. HP regen. Okay, whatever. This hero's like the same. I would still pick it. Ogre Magi, strength game reduced. Shard fire shield no longer procs on creeps. Okay. 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 Alright. Alright, you can spam ignite in the lane. Take ignite at level one. That's all I'm getting out of this. Omni Knight, strength game reduced. Agi increased. Bonus strength increased. By quite a lot at max. Cooldown, much better later on. That's very nice. Hammer of Purity, the shard, which is kind of cool on core Omni. No longer heals Omni on attack. Can no longer be cast on creeps. Now puts a debuff on the enemy, which reduces the enemy's outgoing damage by 60%. What the hell? Oh, okay, but it's a much... Uh, that just seems bad. Oracle. Armor increased by... Eh, it's not that bad, but... It's not that bad, but it's kind of bad. Like, this is a really long cooldown. Armor increased by one. Cooldown increased. Okay. Duration. Okay. Now affects Roshan. That's a big buff to OD. Wow, that's a massive buff to OD. Giving OD the ability to Roshan or like a much, much better ability to Roshan is a massive buff to OD. So super big deal for OD spammers. Fixed Astral debuff not displaying. Okay. Grants an additional 5% mana capacity to steal to Astral Imprisonment. Also allows allies to move at 40% movement speed during Astral Imprisonment. They are visible but aren't targetable and can't perform any other actions. What? I don't need. I'm not even going to try to figure I don't, I don't care about OD. Pango now slows enemies. Whoa, shield crash now slows for three seconds. That's a lot. But the damage... Oh, no, but the damage reduction was increased. Damage reduction duration... Okay, so maybe you max this. And the cooldown was... Whoa! Okay, but lucky... Okay, so lucky shot... Okay, 
So basically what they're telling you to do is put points in this spell, which I think is mega legit. I think this is super freaking legit. I totally can see the build right now being, um, you basically go Orb of Venom, and then you take your Q, then your E, and then your W. Or you take your W and then your E. You don't even have to take Swashbuckle. Like literally, you just you just shield crash on them, get damage reduction, slow them for 25% for three seconds, which is massive. And then you reduce their armor by four, which is insane. Definitely can see people rushing Oove on this hero and then just buying stats. Like Oove, you basically buy like Oove, Branches, Tangos, and you just like click these two spells together and it's really strong. I could totally see this being good. Um, and going like four, 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 one. You just like leave this a level one now. Lucky shot. Okay. Yeah, I think it's good. Phantom Assassin, slow duration increased. Okay. Uh, quite a lot of level one. Okay. I don't care about the rest. Phantom Lancer. Ag okay. Dash length increase. Okay. Whatever. Max health heal per second reduced by. Wait, so it's okay. So it's just reduced at all levels by quite a lot. So losing out a lot of heal to Sunray, making the Holy Locket build worse. But I think the shard build is still really good. Radius increased on fire spirits, so, so a massive buff to, to fire spirits. Like, 25 radius on these things is a lot. Puck getting one base damage. Cooldown increased, really. So, a nerf to the cooldown on phase shift, which hurts a lot. Dream, co Dream Coil no longer has an initial stun. It still cancels TP since it, since it leashes the target. Interesting, which seems definitely like a nerf, because basically what you could do is you could initiate with the Dream Coil, and then you could silence because it mini stunned. Um, but now you have to initiate with silence. Otherwise people can like hex you and stuff. So just be careful about that guys. If you're a puck spammer, you have to go in with silence most of the time now. Pudge, meat hook, mana cost rescaled. Okay. Now instantly kills any non ancient Wow. Oh, wow. Wait, what? Oh, that's crazy. Dude, Pudge is just fucking Marana. Oh, wow. This is crazy. This is actually insane. This is really good, actually. Like this is really, really good. Like people are just going to like... They're going to go off lane. They're just going to have their like position forward, pull them to large camp. You're going to hook the large camp, get XP. You're going to hook the range creep to start the lane. Like Pudge Marana lane, you just like instantly kill off two creeps, shut the lane. Then you farm the large camp. Like you can test the large camp. Don't let them block it. Then you farm the large camp. I don't know. This is super legit. Like this is like super, super legit. It's actually insane how good this is uh, for Pudge. This seems really good. You just max it too for farming. Okay. I can totally get behind this. It seems really good. Short cast range and allies reduced. Okay. Pugnut Netherward no longer has a mana reducing aura. Now additionally heals two hits whenever it triggers. Oh. Oh, okay. So basically people can't cast spells when they're killing this thing, which is kind of cool. Um, better for team fights, worse for laning. Okay. Uh, base damage increased by three on Quap. Now heals Queen of Pain for 10, 20, 30, 40 health on every tick. Heals 50% on creeps. Tick damage reduced from 30, 50, 70, 90. Okay. So it heals, but does less damage. So it's a decent laning spell though, right? Um, heals you for like 30, you can spam it. Eh, it's probably not that good. Razor now applies its armor reduction before applying its damage. Oh, wow, that's just, that seems like a big buff. So every single tick is going to do a little bit more damage. I don't know how much more, but a little bit more damage. Um, Ricky, damage increased on Blink Strike by 15 at level 1, which is really nice for securing creeps and harassing. Damage per attack reduced, but the Scepter attack account was increased. So trying to incentivize the Scepter, but I don't think people are going to buy it. Nerf to the Sleeping Dart, which makes sense. It's kind of busted. Still really good, though. This isn't that big of a nerf. Spell steal, uh, big buff to Rubik's spell steal. Um, big, big, big buff, like massive buffs actually. Super, super good. Six seconds less at level one is really nice. Projectile speed increased from 900 to 1200, which is also a big buff. So really good for certain uh, stolen spells. Sanking strength gain reduced from three to 2.7. Um, shard now also grants 20 damage per, pul per pulse. Okay, that's that's actually good. Maybe I can see that being good because it's like it works with your ulti, which makes it like kind of nice. 1400 gold for extra ulti damage is like good later on. So people will buy it for that. And then, OK, you have the other benefit too. 20 Sandstorm DPS at level 10. Wow. And Sandstorm Radius at level 15. Really? This is a massive buff. 20 Sandstorm DPS at level 10. That's crazy good. That's actually so much damage. That's really nice. OK, I mean, yeah, this seems really good, especially late game. You just have this like massive ass like blinding and slowing radius it's good early game because of this and good late game because of this this seems super legit like mega legit but sand king's kind of good just a little bit less uh strength though shadow demon definitely hero i think is is going to be good definitely hero i think can can become very good oh okay so basically they made shadow poison better at level one disruptor more cast range which is actually nice it, it does matter it's a very low cast range and soul catcher now temporarily gives shadow demon spell amp for each hero to buff which is cool um 
yeah, I mean, it's cool on the poison. You basically soul catcher and then proc your poison, which is good. You know, definitely something you can take a value point in. Rework Shard. Necromastery is now an attack modifier that consumes one soul granted your next attack with 170% crit with a three second cooldown. Additionally, enemies killed grant an extra soul. Ah, uh, is this good? Three second cooldown, just a crit? Eh, I don't think that's that good. It's not even that high of a crit. It's kind of a cool concept. If it wasn't a cooldown based thing, then I could get behind it. But being a cooldown based thing, I don't think it's that good. Uh, slower scale on the ulti. Okay. They're just trying to make him a bit of a right clicker, it seems, but kind of. Mass Serpent Ward. Cooldown better at max. Worse level one. Mana cost better. Okay, I don't care. Strength gain reduced on Silencer. Now deals double damage and slow when the target is silenced. Penalty duration reduced from five to three. Okay. That doesn't seem that crazy. Last word mutes items. What the hell? Late game silencer with the ags just dooming people. <laughs> okay, that's kind of weird. That's funny. I don't think it's good because this hero has a hard time getting levels, but sure. Silencer. I mean, Skyrath. Base damage increased by 15 at level one, which is a ton. Movement speed slow increased by to 40%, 10% extra level one. That's massive. And the duration was reduced, which means it's just more damage, right? Because it's it's just faster damage. Big bust to Skyrath. Like, really big bust to Skyrath. Making this hero much better in the laning stage and just quicker damage. Yeah, definitely super nice. Good enough to make him legit? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, 40% slow is insane. Like, it's that's a lot. It's really crazy for trading. Slaughter. Cooldown increased. Okay, what the? But the bonus. Okay, so it's a longer cooldown, but you have to max it, which you do anyway. But it makes you go much faster level one, which seems like a buff for the laning stage. So I'm going to say this is a buff. It is, it is a long cooldown though, so I don't know, it, it's it's tough to say. Self damage reduced by 50% to 30%, that's a big buff, especially for the landing stage, before you have your ulti. Cooldown reduced uh, by a 5 seconds all levels, that's really nice. Dark pack cooldown at level 10, that could be super legit. It's like kind of good for, it's actually super solid for farming. Definitely super solid for farming and really good in mid game team fights. Shadow Dance attack speed, ah, okay, maybe. If it works with the shard, that's good. Then you get a lot of extra attack speed. Or you take dark pack damage, which is probably more likely. But Shadow Dance's attack speed is not terrible. It's just like a it's a bit odd. Strength gain increased on Snapfire. Burn damage increased. Okay, not by a ton. Uh cooldown. Okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. Sniper. Uh, this is the hero I said I think would be busted. Let's see what they did. Uh, this is the hero I thought would, after like one more buff, would be good. So Shrapnel does five more damage at all levels, which is okay. Here's the thing I thought they should change, which they did majorly change, which is taking. No longer grants true strike. Active self movement speed slow increased. Oh my god, you're a snail. Active headshot chance increased from 70% to 100. The cooldown was massively buffed. The mana cost was, was nerfed in half. And the duration was reduced by 1. This seems like a massive buff, actually. The reason why I think it's a massive buff is basically how I see this is people are going to buy a Mask of Madness. They're going to click take game. Then they're going to click their mask with a Dragon Lance. And it does, it's going to do a ton of damage, like a ton. Um, so it doesn't give true strike, but I think that's totally fine. This this has a lot of potential. I mean, it was already kind of good, but like a really low cooldown. It's even good in the lane. Like imagine just like walking up to someone in the lane and just like proccing twice on them with a headshot guaranteed, right? Like it's good for trading too. So yeah, I mean, it seems like a big buff to me. I, I, I don't think this is good enough to make this hero broken like I thought it would be, but I definitely think Sniper has potential. Spectre, rework shard, causes dispersion to fire a spectral dagger every 300 damage absorbed into the direction of the last damage source. Can fire a dagger every 7 seconds and only triggers off player base damage. Okay, that's nothing. The other one was better. Spectral dagger debuff is now dispellable. Wow, that's a big nerf. Fixed being able to target creep hero units, okay. Okay, 5 second spectral dagger cooldown. That's really nice at level 10. It's like a big buff. Yeah, that's, that's quite nice. But they nerfed it. Spirit Breaker! This hero is kind of irrelevant. Okay, less strength, 40 less HP, which is kind of a nerf. Definitely a nerf. More mana cost. What? Now deals extra damage to creeps. So, okay, I guess you farm faster. So, they're trying to make him like an offlaner, but that's not like. This seems just bad. Like, you're going to run out of mana even faster, and you're worse at level 1, which is like his strength. This just seems bad, and I'm not going to lie. Uh, this seems really bad. Storm! Static remnant damage slightly increased. Starting mana cost reduced from 30 plus 8% to 25 plus 7.5. Really? Buffing Storm by quite a decent amount too. 0.5% um, really matters. It absolutely matters on a hero like Storm. So big buff there. Bit of a nerf here though, I would say. Sven. 
Great Cleave. Damage rescaled from 30, 50, 70, 90 to 25, 50, 75, 100. Okay, so slightly better. Eh, that seems not good. Damage rescaled. Techies bombs do less. Building damage percent increased. Okay, that seems like it's just a nerf. Psyblade. Spilled that. Okay, broken TA, right? Spill range multiplier reduced from 2 to 1.5. Now deals 5% less spill damage to each successive enemy after the first one. That's not... That's probably fine. Channel time increased from 1 to 1.5. That's not too bad. Okay, but if she gets root, root early, she can't do it. Which makes sense. I don't know why it, it didn't work like that in the first place. So, I don't want to say that... I think the hero is still fine. I think you can still pick TA. Absolutely. I absolutely th still think you can pick TA. You just, like, focus the axe a little bit less. And um, it's harder to, like, be cheeky with the side blades. But it's still... Not bad. Terrorblade, Agi gain down, duration on meta, four seconds less, which is a lot. Uh, now applies a basic dispel on TB. It's good for late game. Definitely a reason to buy it. Uh, this just seems like TB nerfs overall, though. This is a big nerf. Four, four to seconds less on meta is really annoying. Base, mana regen increased on tide. Okay. Armor reduction, uh, reduced. No! Bonus damage reduced. Okay. What? What's better then? Threshold timer increased from six. Oh, I guess they thought this hero was good. Okay. I don't. This just seems like a ton of nerfs <laughs> for like no good reason. Timber, whirling death damage reduced, uh, tree damage rescaled. So it's okay. This just seems like a nerf. Debuff duration. Okay. So they just nerf whirling death essentially. That's just mostly a nerf. It's like technically better later on, but not really. I don't think that's, uh, it's much better to have it earlier on in my opinion. Damage rescaled from 170. That is rough. Fixed timber chain cast range, uh, being slightly larger than timber chain length. Causing timber chain to miss sometimes. Okay. Oh, I didn't even know that's a thing. But yeah, I don't know. This just seems like massive nerfs. Especially this one. This is the big nerf here. Makes it much harder to harass and secure creeps with this spell. Okay. Laser now splashes 100% of its damage on a 250 AoE. Only the main target gets blinded shrink raid. Now splashes 100% of its damage in a 250 AoE. Only the main target gets blinded shrink raid. Shrink raid bon bonus cast range reduced. Shrink rate HP reduction reduced. Okay, so they nerfed this axe pretty hard. This is a massive buff, right? Like, you can just max laser and use it to wave clear? Can't you just go, like, 4 four four zero now? And, like, clear waves with your Q and do hits? Isn't that, like, the vibe now? Right? Defense Matrix is now a basic skill. Oh, so they must have gotten rid of the E, right? They must have gotten rid of March. I guess we'll just keep going. Mana cost reduced. Uh, okay. Damage absorbs reduced from 350 to 100. Uh, okay. Status resist reduced from 20, 30, 40, 50. So, still quite a bit. Cast range increased by quite a lot, and the cooldown is 12. So basically, the concept here I'm imagining is that you pop this in the laning stage to reduce damage occasionally. And that's the whole idea. Like, that's the main thing. But at the same time, you can use it on teammates, like, to save them, which is cool, right? 50% status resist is a ton. So, yeah, I mean, okay. Rearm is worse at level 1 now, which is just them saying, like, hey, maybe this hero is too good early on. Keen convenience, rearm, new rearm sub ability, what? Wait, what? New rearm sub ability. Channel for 4.5, 4.3.5 to teleport to a friendly building. Level 2 allows targeting units and level 3 allows targeting heroes. Rearm sub ability? What does that even mean? So like you can switch your rearm? Oh, so you don't have to buy bots? Is that the concept here? Why do I fe feel like Tinker's about to become the best hero in Dota? Like by a long shot. I'm like, I'm actually a little bit concerned. I, I feel like this seems kind of busted if you don't have to buy bots. You can buy like Greaves early on or you can buy like just an early anything else that you would want. Yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 concerned that Tinker might become busted. I'm not I'm not sure because this is a lot to take in, but I would keep your eye out for this hero. A hundred percent. It's just yeah, it's it's weird, but I, I think that hero could be busted. Tree throw, extra a lot of extra splash damage, and less attack speed penalty. Just making this hero a better right clicker, which all right, that's fine. More movement speed, nice. Duration reduced. Okay, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay, whatever. Whirling Axe's damage increased by a lot. Much better for scaring creeps. Cooldown reduced. Okay, it's nice in the late game. I would say this is good, good troll buffs. He needed them. Tusk, Ice Shards, reworked shard. Enemies within 200 radius of the center of the Ice Shard suffers from 40% slow and take 60 damage per second. Enemies within 200 radius of the center of the shard suffer from 40% slow and take 60 damage per second. Increases the length of Ice Shard by 300. Really? What does that even mean? That's a lot. Bonus damage per hero increased from 20, 40, 60, 80 to 20. Okay. This seems like a massive buff to shard though, right? It's like a 40% slow is insane. And 60 damage per second is insane early on. Increases the length of ice shard by 300. This seems really good, right? This could be busted. It seems kind of busted. Underlord. Base movement speed reduced. Mana cost uh, increased. Okay. Rework scepter. 
grants new ability Fiend's Gate, cast within 4,000 range to create a portal next to Underlord and a portal at the target location. Allies can click on either portal to teleport to one another under a two second channel. Portals are indestructible, last 20 seconds, and can be only cast in locations where wards can be placed. Okay, that's really cool actually. This is like nutty for split pushing and like nutty for ganking people, right? Like that's insane actually. Like let's say someone's split pushing, like you can just like teleport your entire team to that guy. That's crazy actually. I mean, it is 4,200 gold, but that seems really good. Like really, really good. Okay, uh, soul rip mana cost reduced by a lot of level one. That's a big buff for his laning. Seems really nice. Movement speed bonus increased. That's nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, are they trying to make this hero a core? I don't think that's good. You can spawn an, a, a zombie on each attack. What are you going to go like Mask of Madness? Like, like, I don't understand. That makes no sense. Base strength increased from 25 to 24. Cooldown is just nerfed. Sharp. What the hell? I don't even think this hero was good, dude. I feel like Valve makes changes and then they like, they don't adjust. I guess it makes sense because like this hero was popular for a bit, but then like it kind of fell off. Yeah, it's just weird to me. It's, it's, it's a little bit weird to me for sure. I don't, I don't really get this. Vengeful Spirit now deals 50 damage to enemies on swap, so it prevents them from blinking out after you swap them, which is good. Now the swap now causes Vengeful Spirit and ally she swaps to take 35, 30, 40, 50 percent less damage for three seconds. That's really good. That could, that's, that's a lot. You know, that's a ton. You could even swap people in and make them tanky. It's cool. Agility reduced from 25, 3.5, uh, 26 to, uh, okay, pff, 26 to 24. Damage skill from 40, 65, 90. 20 to 20, 30, 40 plus max health and damage. Okay, so it's much better later on, but it's really bad early game, right? Or is it not? Scepter damage rescaled. Okay, so they also made the scepter just do a lot more max health. Is that good? I can't tell if that's good or not. I mean, I guess it's it's really good late game, right? Like, so this just makes this hero a much better late game hero, which is cool because you don't really like, you don't really prioritize this ability early game anyway. So I'd imagine this is just straight up better late game, I think. It depends on the hero. It depends on how much HP they have. So it's good against tanky heroes. I can tell you that. Okay, Viper. Mana cost decreased on your Q, which is kind of interesting. Max damage reduced by a lot on Nether Toxin. So finally, they're giving a... I mean, I'm not going to say finally, but they're actually basically forcing you to take your W now. This 50 at level 1 is pretty rough. I would say maybe 2 points and then leave it alone. 75 is good enough in my opinion. So, yeah, I would probably take two points and then leave it alone, I think. And then go back to the normal build. But they did make the, the Q a little bit better, so they're kind of like off. They're, they're, they're kind of changing a little bit. Also, you can get a 70 Nether Toxin max damage talent, which mm, is probably not that good. Okay, Visage. Interesting. Move speed drain reduced. Okay. Gather damage radius increased, so you get a lot more potential damage in fights. Cooldown reduced on familiars. Armor increased by not too much. Okay, that doesn't seem that good. Aether Remnant, mana cost reduced. Okay, pull duration increased. So just slightly better in, in every regard. Debuff damage increased later on by 100. Really good late game. 100 extra damage is quite nice. Uh, it's extra 200 damage. Nothing crazy though. I don't think this hero is still that good, but these are very nice number changes. Very nice. Warlock, level 15 talent, 40 DPS upheaval replaced by 10% attack speed per second to allies. Interesting. Weaver, the swarm, travel speed increased from 600 to 750. That's a lot. Now ignores damage block. Oh, that's really good in the early game against this like melee stout shield shit. It's going to it's gonna add a lot of damage to this hero. It's really good. Can be, now be toggled to disable autocast. That's good. It's actually a big buff. It's kind of like, you know, like your typical Tidebringer. Like if you're CSing, you don't want to use it, right? You'd rather just save it and use it on a hero. So that's really nice. That's super convenient, actually. Definitely huge buffs to Weaver here in the early game. Like, massive early game Weaver buffs. Do I think this hero is good, though? I don't know. I, I think it's probably okay, actually. These are big buffs. Wind Ranger. Rework Shard now grants Gale Force. Vector targeted summers a strong wind. Pushes all enemies within a 1,000 AoE by 250 units per second in the target direction for 3 seconds. Unit can still move, attack, and cast spells. Does not interrupt channeling. Mana. Cost. 150. Cooldown. 40 seconds. That seems really good. It's like Kunkka's Shard. Except on a much longer cooldown. But it pushes people for a long time. Edgy gain. Okay, people really hate this hero, so let's see what they did. Um, okay, attack range, slightly nerfed, nothing too crazy. Movement speed slow, slightly nerfed, nothing too crazy. Cast range reduced on your ulti by quite a lot, 100 is a ton. Um, shard cooldown reduced, okay, that wasn't really that big of a deal. Okay, but they also nerfed the percentage, which hurts. What I'm still seeing here is that right-click wyvern is still good, though. 
It's just like this hero's overall worse. Okay, so they nerfed this pretty hard. 15 less damage at 10. All right, I don't know. I, I I have a feeling Wyvern's just not that good. I think it's like okay still, but it's probably not the best. Witch Doctor, Paralyzing Cast, Creep Damage Increased. Hero Damage Reduced Deals More. Okay, that's stupid. Reincarnation, Cooldown Increased from 200 to 120, 40 to 200, 130, 60. I feel like that they didn't need to do that at all. I feel like this hero is not that good and didn't need to get nerfed very hard. Like this is a very hard nerf. It makes it much harder to get it up again in a fight. It makes it very hard to siege high ground in relation to what you could. So I do not really understand that. Ah! Zeus, the last hero! Woo! Guys, if you made it to the end, I just want to say one thing. Comment down below, beast. Or like, you're a beast, or I'm a beast. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin one in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you watched the entire thing, you are absolutely insane. I thank you so much. It really does mean a lot that you're supporting the channel. Hopefully, you get a lot of information on the patch, the changes... We, of course, have a bunch of crazy videos. You know, the top five heroes that I think are most buffed, the the, the most inconsequential changes. I'm going to be covering everything in more condensed videos after this. But all right, let's get into Zeus. Metacost reduced, 125, 130, 135, 40. Uh, okay, so just a buff to the W, sort of. Short, active mana cost. Eh. It does give unobstructed vision around Zeus for three seconds, which is a lot, so that's good. Duration reduced on Nimbus. Okay, so they nerfed the Nimbus. Okay, what? Okay, so Zeus is basically not any different. All right! I can't wait to play some games in 7.3. I'm going to probably try out Lich and ET because I'm a lame loser who just likes mini changes. But definitely a very cool patch. I love the item changes, the neutral item changes, good item changes overall, good hero changes overall. I definitely am a big fan of this patch. Shout out to Valve for taking 8 million years. <laughs> Shout out to Valve. It's, you know, always appreciate the fact that you just change this game. Even though it does take maybe a little bit too long, we still appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And like and subscribe. Boom, 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 peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.